we are beginning our review on Sokotoa and right triangle trigonometry. And, uh, well, <laughs> Princess Sokotoa knows what she's talking about. So, let's get right into this. In these first problems, what we need to first do is to, uh, well, in these first two, we know two sides. We need to find the third side. This is just Pythagorean theorem. In both of these, we're looking for one of the legs. So, x squared plus my other leg squared equals my hypotenuse squared. When I simplify this, I should end up getting that x squared will equal, when I subtract over, 360,000. So I had a million here, and this was uh, 640,000. Take the square root of both sides, and I should get here x equals 600, just using Pythagorean theorem. Same thing here, x squared for the leg plus 17 squared for the other leg equals 35 squared. When I simplify this, I should get x squared is equal to 936. Take the square root. Uh, I can't really take that square root, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. x equals the square root of 936. That's fine. That's actually more precise of an answer than getting into a decimal. All right, for these ones down here, we're going to use, of course, our good friend, so -ka toa So make sure you remember that. As we look at this one here, based on our angle here, here's the hypotenuse, so we have that, and we have the side next to it, the adjacent. So adjacent and hypotenuse is is uh, the ka, so that means I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of what? Cosine of 41 degrees equals adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 15. x is up high, that's how I know to multiply. So I'm going to multiply 15 times cosine of 41 degrees to get my x, which means I will get my answer x equals 11.32. For this one here, number four, <clears throat> I have my angle here, I have the side opposite of it, and I have the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is sine. Sine of what? Of 74 degrees equals the opposite was 9, because it's across from it, over x my hypotenuse. When x is down low, the x and the trig function just switch, you know. So, oops, go ahead if I write it right. So when they switch, I still have 9 up top, and I have sine of 74 degrees on the bottom. So I just plug that straight in, 9 divided by sine of 74, and I should get 9.36 as my answer. All right, five and six, there's really no difference except for we want to solve the triangle. That means we just need to go, after we find the other side, we need to find the missing sides and angles. So first, find x. Same idea, I have the side opposite and the side adjacent. So that's tangent. Again, if I have to write it down again, it's so katoan. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. Tangent of what? 27 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, over 24, which is the adjacent. X is up high, that's how I know to multiply. So tangent of 27 degrees equals X. So that means I should get X is equal to 12.23. Now, to get my other side and my other angle. Well, first, the other angle should be very easy. My other angle, I just need to subtract from 180 the angles I already know. Well, I already knew I had a 90, and I already knew I had a 27. So that means my remaining angle here is 63 degrees. So that's how I find my other angle. And now what I need to find as well is the last side. Well, I just found what x was. It was here 12 point, what was it, 12.23. So to find the final side, well, I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem. We're going to have 24 squared for the one leg plus is 12.23 squared for the other leg equals my hypotenuse squared. So when I simplify that, when I simplify that, I should get like 725.5729 is equal to c squared. So then I'll just take the square root of that, and I will get my answer, which is uh, 26 point, uh, like 26.9495 as my other side. So your three pieces of information, the missing side, or the side for x, I mean, and then your other angle and your other side. All right, we'll do the same thing for this guy over here. Start with our angle. We have the hypotenuse, and we have the adjacent. Adjacent hypotenuse is cosine, so I'm going to do cosine of 31 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. X is down low, so the X and the angle will switch. So 18 over cosine of 31 degrees. So I'll just plug that straight into my calculator, and I should get uh, it's 21 point, like 002 or something. It comes up just uh, 21.00. Okay. Second step, the angle. Same thing as before, 180. Subtract the 90 for the right angle. Subtract 31 for the other angle. And my angle left is 59 degrees. And then the third part, now that I know my hypotenuse is 21 even, what I'm going to do is set up an equation. I have 18 squared for the one leg. I don't know what my 
uh, my second leg is, I'll call it b squared, equals my hypotenuse squared, which is 21 squared. So what I'm going to do is I get 21 squared on this side is 441. I get 18 squared on the other side is 324 plus b squared. I'll subtract 324 from both sides, so 441 minus 324 will give me 117 there. And to get b, I'll just take the square root of that, 117. You can leave it like that or figure it out that it ends up being like a 10.82 as your, <coughs> excuse me, as your other side. All right, moving on. Finding the exact value of the trig function. So again, write it out. Yes, so Katoa. Make sure we know how we're doing this. For sine, opposite over hypotenuse. Here's your angle. The side opposite is 24. The hypotenuse is 25. So that's all I have to do is write 24 over 25. Cosine of theta. Well, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. However, I don't know what this adjacent side is. Well, I can figure that out, though, using, like we did before, Pythagorean theorem. So I'll call that a squared. I don't know it. Plus my other leg is 24 squared equals 25 squared. I'm going to have then a squared plus 24 squared, which is a number, 576, is going to equal 625. That gives me, when I subtract, a squared equals 49, so my side here is 7. That's my unknown side of 7. Now I can fill out the rest of this. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 7 over 25. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, so 24 over 7. To get the right-hand side, it's real easy. Just flip everything over. This becomes 25 over 24, just when it's flipped over. This is uh, 25 over 7, and this is 7 over 24. All right, same here for the next step. I'm even going to start with saying, what is the side that I don't know because I need to figure it out? So that's the side I don't know. Let's solve for it. To do so, uh, Pythagorean theorem yet again. What I'll do is I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So it's 50 squared plus 120 squared equals my hypotenuse squared. When I do that, uh, I should end up getting uh, that C here is equal to 130. So now I know exactly what that side is here of 130. I can now fill out all of these. So sine of theta, here's theta. Make sure you pay attention to where theta is. Here's the opposite is 50. So 50 over the hypotenuse, 130 for sine. Cosine, 120 over 130, and then tangent, 50 over 120. So make sure you pay attention to where theta is, because that determines what is opposite and what is adjacent. And again, go secant, just flip them around, 130 over 50. Uh, secant here is going to be 130 over 120, and then this here is 120 over 50. Now what I should do here is I should be looking to see if I need to simplify. Well, they all end in zero, so I can literally just take off the zeros on each and every one of these. So 5 over 13, 12 over 13, 5 over 12. Same here, 13 over 5, 13 over 12, and 12 over 5 are my exact answers. I should be trying to simplify these the best that I can. All right, next step, same thing here. Let's find our missing side. Our missing side here is, again, the hypotenuse. So I'm going to have 14 squared plus 18 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. The, uh, these will add up to 520. So when I take the square root, well, I can't take an exact square root of 520, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. The square root of 520 is my hypotenuse. So this is the square root of 520. Sine of the angle. Here's the angle. The opposite is 14 over the square root of 520. Now, I shouldn't leave it like that, so I'm going to multiply by root 520 on both the top and the bottom. So when I do that, I should get my final answer. is going to be 14 square roots of 520 all over 520. And I can try to reduce that, which I should. I can divide both those by 2. I should get 7 square roots of 520. Uh, that'll be all over 260. So that is your specific answer. 7 root 520 all over 260. Same way here, when I do cosine, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to end up getting, for cosine of theta, I'll have 18 over the square root of 520. Same idea, multiply by root 520 over root 520, and I'm going to get as an answer, like I did before, 18 square roots of 520 all over 520, and that also can reduce. I'm going to bring it down here so I have some room. That's going to be 9 square roots of 520 all over 260. 
All right, for tangent, that's going to be the easy one here. Tangent is going to be opposite, which is 14, over adjacent, which is 18. And I'll simplify that as well to be 7 over 9. All right, and then for my last ones, what I need to do here is just flip them. So for, seek, or for cosecant, I mean, I want to flip this fraction. No, I'd rather flip my original fraction. So I'll have the square root of 520 over 14. That's the answer I want there. Same here, flip my original one, 520, square root of 520, over 18. And then for 7 over 9, that just becomes 9 over 7. All right, and last one here. <coughs> Excuse me. To find my missing side, same idea, here it is. It's one of my legs, so I'm going to call that a squared plus my other leg 12 squared equals 24 squared. When I do that, I'm now going to just go and simplify. I'm going to get a squared uh, plus 144 equals 576. So I'll get a squared is equal to uh, 432, which means I'll take the square root of that and another one that I cannot take the square root of. So I'll just leave it as the square root of 432. So when I solve these, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Again, go based on where your angle is. So it's going to be 12 over 24, which I can simplify to be 1 over 2. Let me just do cosecant because that's going to be really easy. That's just 2 over 1, which is just 2. For cosine, that's going to be the opposite over the, or I'm sorry, the adjacent, my bad, over the hypotenuse. So here's adjacent, here's hypotenuse. Adjacent we just found was 432, the square root of 432, all over my hypotenuse of 24. And then for tangent, it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So that means I'm going to have 12 over the square root of 432. And again, I can't do that. I don't like it that way. It's not proper. So square root of 432, square root of 432. And I can simplify that now to be 12 square roots of 432 all over 432. And I should see if that simplifies, which it will. I can divide both the top and bottom by 12. So I'll have root 432 uh, divided by 36 on the bottom. Okay. I can do the cotangent, flipping that real quick. Just from my original one, I'll flip it to be root 432 all over 12. And when I do secant, it's going to be a little trickier. I'll have 24 over the square root of 432. Again, I need to multiply on top and bottom by the square root of 432. So I'm going to get as my answer here, 24 square roots of 432 all over 432. And again, I can simplify this. I can uh, divide 432 by uh, 24, so I'll just have the square root of 432 divided by 18. Make sure you try to simplify as completely as you can. All right, on these, these are really simple. All you have to do is plug into your calculator. Remember though, cotangent, we type it in as 1 divided by tangent of 34 degrees. Similarly, uh, secant is 1 divided by cosine of 46 degrees. This is 1 divided by secant of 71 degrees, or I'm sorry, we want cosecant, that means that it's going to be sine of 71 degrees, and then cotangent again means 1 divided by the tangent of 48 degrees. And all I have to do is just plug those right into your calculator and read off the answer. We want it to four decimal places, so 1.4826, this guy becomes 1.4396, this one here is 1.0576, and this one is 0 0.9004, and that's just reading straight off of your calculator. Now, the tough uh, is your <coughs> application problems, where we just need to try to draw the picture the best you can. So, we have a vertical pole casting a shadow. The pole is 30 feet long, and the shadow is 14 feet long. We want to know the angle of elevation. Remember, angle of elevation means down at the bottom. So, based on that angle in this right triangle, I have opposite and adjacent. So, that means I have tangent. Always tangent of something. Tangent of theta equals 30 over 14. When I'm finding an angle like I am here, I need to take the inverse tangent. So I'm going to do my second tangent of 30 over 14. That's what's going to tell me what my angle is. So my angle, when I punch that into a calculator, is going to be 64.98 degrees. At number 16, Jim ran 700 yards up a hillside. So here's him running the 700 yards up the hill. It tells us here that the angle is 24 degrees with the horizontal. We want to know what the, <coughs> excuse me, the vertical rise of the hill is. So we want to know this guy right here. So that's my x. So there we have, based on our angle, I have the side opposite and the hypotenuse. That's sine. So sine of what? 24 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
X is up high, that's how I know to multiply. 700 sine of 24 degrees equals X. So my answer when I plug that in should be 284.69 yards. Make sure we keep our units there. Uh, same up here, make sure we have degrees for the correct units. All right, our next two. Pile of an airplane, 12,000 feet high, looks at a water tower. So I'm gonna say here's my lovely Terrible looking plane, but it, it kind of works, I guess. It's looking down at a water tower. The angle of depression, so that's this angle right here. I mean, we're going to kind of draw it like this. Here's uh, the angle of depression is 25 degrees. He's flying at 12,000 feet, so that means this distance is 12,000. They want to know what is the length of the line of sight. Well, here is that line of sight, so here's my x. That's what I want to know. So based on this angle, I again have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, which is x. So, opposite and hypotenuse is sine, sine of my angle, which is 25, equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. X is down low, that means X and the angle will switch. So 12,000 over sine of 25 degrees, which means I'm going to uh, plug that in and get 13,240.65, like, my unit should be feet. There's your answer. All right, and the last one, this is one of our double triangle problems. So, we have... 70 feet high, a dude looking down, so here's 70 feet, he's looking down at a campsite on one side and a bear on the other side, so this is where we're going to have two different distances. The angle to the bear is, well let's see, the angle to the campsite is going to be 28 degrees, the angle to the bear is going to be 19 degrees. And we need to know how far the bear and the campsite are away. So we'll say here's a campsite and we'll say here's well, a bad looking crazy bear thing. All right, <clears throat> I'll give him some ears. To find this bear, or to find this distance, we're gonna look at each triangle differently. Starting with this triangle here on the left, what I'm going to say is, I have this, from the angle, I have the uh, opposite side and the adjacent side. So that's gonna be tangent. Tangent of 28 degrees will equal opposite over adjacent, which was the height, which is 70. So x is up high, so we're going to multiply. So 70 tangent of 28 is equal to x. So that means that this distance here is going to be 37.22 feet. I also need to do the other, other side here on the right. So that's also tangent when I look at this triangle, opposite over adjacent. Tangent of uh, this angle, which is 19 degrees, is equal to opposite over adjacent. Same thing. Uh, the variable is up high, that's how we know to multiply, equals y. When I multiply that out, I get 24.10 feet uh, for y in this case. So those are my two answers. Now, what I need to do though is I need to say I'm looking when they're on opposite sides and when they're on the same side. When they're on opposite sides like they are here, I need to add to find the total distance apart. So the opposite is just going to be x plus y, and that's going to equal here when I add them up uh, 24.10 and 37.22 should give me 61.32 feet. When I do on the same side, I need to subtract them. So the bigger number, x minus y. When I subtract them, I get 13.12 feet. So make sure we know opposite sides, we add. Same sides, we subtract when we do these problems. All right, and then the last one, really uh, straightforward. For 19 and 20, just draw the triangle. So. If sine of an, of an angle is 4 fifths, draw it out. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I need to find this side right here. Just use Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. This is going to be x squared will equal 9. That means x equals 3. So to find what cosine there would be, adjacent over hypotenuse, that means cosine of theta will just be 3 over 5. And number 20, I'll even draw it down here so I have a little more room. If cosecant is 25 over 24, I can rewrite that and say that that means sine of theta is 24 over 25. Here's theta, let's make it 24 over 25. And same thing, use Pythagorean theorem, I need to find this missing guy. x squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. Subtract them over, I should get x squared equals 49, which means x equals 7. So this guy is now 7. So to find, they want to know what tangent is, tangent of theta, then would equal opposite over adjacent, which is 24 over 7. All right, last one, 21. The value of tangent is restricted from negative 1 to 1. Well, 
I think this pretty much tells you right now that obviously that is not true. Sine and cosine are restricted from negative 1 to 1. Tangent, though, is not. So this answer here for number 21 is definitely false. And number 22, cosecant has no uh, restrictions. Well, remember, cosecant is the same as 1 over sine. Well, if it has restrictions, that means that this denominator would be equaling 0 somewhere. Does, cos or does sine of theta ever equal 0? Well, remember from our unit circle, sine means the y value. Well, our unit circle definitely at some point has a y value of 0. It happens in two different places. So it definitely does have restrictions. So this also is a false statement. All right, well, there we have it. I think that's uh, just about everything. And uh, make sure you are ready to take this and good luck.